Yeah, I've been working through this throughout the worship time. I gotta obey the Lord. So um, I might be a little disjointed, but that's okay. He, he can fix me after that. Amen. 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 How many of God is good? Amen. 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 You know, we had such a, a beautiful Thanksgiving service on um, Wednesday evening. Um, just the, the few that did gather, it was something special to be able to, um, you know, my wife Bernice got up and started thanking everyone personally and saying something specific about each one of their lives. And, um, yeah, it was just a blessing um, to, you know, we, we walked together for so long. And uh, not always an opportunity to begin to thank God for um, what He's done in all of your lives and, and, and how that blesses us. Um, so we, we just had a wonderful time uh, as we gathered together. I, I hope you also had a wonderful time as you gathered together as families at Thanksgiving. Um, you know, and, and uh, we, had, um, we look at that day as a, a day of thanks and everyone's wishing everyone else a Thanksgiving and then we have Black Friday. <laughs> Whoever came up with that name. And then you have, I, I was just reading to my wife, I was reading the Drudge Report, and I was reading down on the, on the list the different titles. I didn't go reading all of these articles, but, you know, this one is shot in a Walmart uh, center. And then, uh, you know, these other ones. And then, then even riot over toilet paper. You know, I mean, I, I just can't understand. Um, we work from one day of being thankful to the next, thankful for the things that we have, thanking God that we have all these things, and then the next day, all the things we need to have that we're going to really fight each other over. Anyway, that's got nothing to do with my message today, but um, if you have uh, um, Ephesians 5, if you can look at Ephesians 5, and then we're going to look at Ezekiel 37. Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus, he said, See then that you work, walk circumspectly. Some of you might have the word carefully there. Anyone have a different word? Work circumspectly. Verse 15. Not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making medley in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Paul here begins by giving the church an admonition that we need to walk carefully. We, we do live in a difficult time. We live in a dark time. In many of our lives we recognize there are things going around us, there are ideas that people have that are far from the ideas of what we've learned and what, what it means to, to walk in Christ. And so he's saying here, don't, don't be unwise. Know what the will of God is. Um, but he's also expressing here that, that we're not to be moderated by some kind of, a, you know, like whether it's drinking or something else. Be, people seem to find their joy and their exhilaration in certain things, whether it be alcohol, now we, we legalize pot, you know, we have all these other kind of things. People are trying to get a high on life in something that's artificial. Maybe it's all those things you bought on Friday. I don't know. We're, we're looking for, for some way to, to, to do this, but he says, don't be drunk with those kind of things, but be filled with the Spirit. And if you're filled with the Spirit, then you're going to speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You know, there, there's something that God is speaking to you, and you're going to take what God is speaking to you and speak it to someone else. When we have fellowship with each other, um, we, we have something of substance to say. We, we can encourage. We can challenge sometimes. You know, they're, they're, whatever it is that, that we're doing, we're, we're, we're relying on God to do something to fill us so that what He fills us with, we can then share. 
Isn't that the beauty of coming together as a church? You know, I know, I know sometimes we look at the model that we have here and, and, and you come and you sort of depend on somebody to come up here to say something. But, but that's not really what church is. This is just a, a piece of a form, but the reality of church is this, is that you and I come here together ready to share something. What you have to say is this is important to what I have to say. But, but we learn that that's not the way we do things, so therefore, in reality, we can kind of become passive, can't we? We'll, we'll let somebody else hear from God for us. Isn't that what the children of Israel said to Moses? Look, I can see that mountain, and, and, and God's shaking up there. There's thunders and lightnings, and, and, and you can hear his voice. And so Moses, you go up there, you hear from God, and you let us know what he says. Whatever he tells you and you tell us, we're going to obey it. Fat chance, right? <laughs> we know what happened with that. Moses would get in the presence of God and he would change. He, he would have the glory of God on him. But, but the people, when Moses shared the words of God to the people, there was no glory on them. Because they were trusting in someone else to be in the presence of God for them. That was in God's purpose. God had called Israel to be a kingdom of priests and kings unto God. That they individually were to be in His presence. That they together were to be able to, you know, understand that God would live in them. You know, we read in, in John 15 when Jesus says, I'm the, the, the vine. The Father is the vine dresser. You are branches, but if you abide in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. <clears throat> then he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. All that's left to be done by the husbandman is to cut the branch off. What happens when you cut off a branch? It dries up. It dies, doesn't it? Can a dry, dead branch bring forth fruit? Is there any hope for that dry branch? There's no hope for the dry branch. It's cut off. Look at Ezekiel 37 for a minute. <laughs> Now, the picture that we're going to have here, that God is dealing with, He's dealing really with the children of Israel. But if you can picture, first of all, the children of Israel who had, way back when, trusted that somebody else would get before God and them. There would be some other intercessor, there would be someone else that would hear the words. In other words, they themselves wouldn't take a regular aspect of learning about God and coming under his direct rule, they would have somebody else rule for them. That's why they set up kings. That's why they, they trusted in prophets. But they didn't always trust in prophets that said what God said. They'd rather have prophets that spoke of things that they wanted to hear. That was then. But this is now. We're not like them, are we? The hand of the Lord came upon me, Ezekiel writes, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and he sat me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. I just want to get to that picture. You, you know, for those of us that understand something about how life works, if you get to the point of bones, that's on the way out. It's a long ways on the way out. I mean, you've gone from a body to decomposition down to everything getting disconnected to the point of a bone and now the bone's dry. 
It doesn't work the opposite way, does it? No matter what any evolutionists want to tell you, you've never experienced this work in the opposite direction. It goes from good to bad to worse. He's looking in a valley, a valley full of bones, and the, and the bones are dry. And God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? I think he answered very politically correct, don't you think? <laughs> Only God, you know. <laughs> so God said to him, so God said to me, he said, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, prophesy to the bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you, and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So God's promising here, telling Ezekiel, here's the work you need to do. You need to just speak the word of the Lord over these dry bones. You keep speaking the word of the Lord over the dry bones, and here's my promise. Those bones are going to hear the word of the Lord. They're going to come together. They're going to have ligaments around them. There's going to be muscle around the bones. There's going to be flesh on the bones. And not only that, I'm going to breathe breath into those bones so that they live. So I prophesied. And I was commanded to do, and I prophesied there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. Can, can you imagine this beginning to take place? Can you imagine being in this valley with dry bones? And all of a sudden you hear noise. Anytime you start prophesying the word of the Lord to people, you're going to hear noise. The noise isn't always a good noise. I don't want to be connected to that bone. I like being my own self, a dry bone. I want to be left alone over here, resting as a dry bone. Well, no, you got to be put in this place. Why should I be put in that place? I don't like being a knee bone. I'd rather be a hip bone, or a toe bone, or a bone head. <laughs> There's noise. When God begins to work and put some things together, there's going to be noise. There's going to be some rattling, he says here. There's a sound of the rattling as the bones came together, bone to bone. Can you, can you hear the noise? To, to begin to put the, the framework together that's necessary for what God's going to do, there's going to be noise. Indeed, I looked, and the sinews in the flesh came upon them, the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. So now we have the land of the zombies. <laughs> They're standing. They look kind of like what you know. But there's no life. Can you see the picture? I mean, disconnected bones that come together with some kind of structure that God's Word caused them to come together with, with a structure, with a muscle, with a sinews, you know, everything's been, been brought together in such a way. Here's the flesh, here's the, the man standing, here's the woman standing, everybody's standing. No life. The appearance of life, but no life. No breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied, as he commanded me. And breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great 
army. Up until this point, they're individuals. They were there. I guess you could count them, but you couldn't count on them. They were there in presence, but they weren't there in reality. Oh, they could fill seats. But they weren't alive. And so the word of the Lord says, prophesy to the breath. That the breath might enter them. And as he did, these dry bones became an army for the Lord. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. So now he's giving him who these bones are. And they indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and I will cause you to come up from your graves. And I'll bring you into the land of Israel, that you shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. And I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land, then you shall know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. God's speaking to his children, Israel. You know, they had been already um, brought into captivity. This is a, a people that had not followed the ways of God. Their leaders had not followed the ways of God. Their priests had not followed the ways of God. Most of their prophets had not followed the ways of God. And now they're in captivity. They're under the judgment of God. And so they're saying here, where's our hope? What is the hope of the future? Because God promised us a land, and we no longer have the land. The Lord says, my promise isn't been taken away. But you are dry bones. And here's my promise to you. I'll put my spirit in you. All the way through the Old Testament, the children of Israel had to rely on the law of God. They had the word of God. But they didn't have the ability to keep that word. They were getting their knowledge of the word through someone else. They were getting the mind of God through someone else. And the Lord's saying this, I want to raise up an army, but it's going to take the word of God being spoken in such a way that first of all, there needs to be some structure. But if we have the structure, and that's as far as we get, all we are is a bunch of walking zombies. Oh, we can quote the Bible, and we'll quote it to each other, and we'll, we'll be our own pious, you know, judgmental and whatever self because we know this and we know better but inwardly we know that we're nothing but a bunch of dried old bones but the word of God here says that the spirit needs to come into the bones so there would be life now I know there are those that are all spirit focused but you know what if you're all spirit focused but you have no bones you can't do anything either. It seems like we have this struggle between churches of the, the, the haves and the haves not, you know? Some that rely totally on the Spirit of God, but you can pretty much do anything you want to do in your life. Then you get the others that are, you know, really trying to follow the Word of God, but there's no room for the Spirit of God. Neither brings life. We need the Word of God 
and we need the Spirit of God for us to see change take place in our life. We need the Word of God to shape us, to be connected the way God has called us to be. We need the Spirit of God to do so with joy. To take individual responsibility. To, to come together and say, hey, we want to be a part. And, and therefore, when we come together as a, as a people of God, you know what? It's not just depending on someone sharing what God said. It's like all of us have something to share what God said. We can come. One has a hymn. One has a song. One's able to give an exhortation. One's able to give an encouragement. Maybe a challenge. It's the body of Christ being the body of Christ. When God's word is preached, it has the power to accomplish what it needs to accomplish. The Bible says that God's word goes out and it does not come back void. Which means it accomplishes what it's supposed to accomplish. That, that means God's word spoken in his spirit brings life. It might not always like what his word says to us. There might be some rattling going on when his word is spoken. There might be some noise even that takes place. But it's necessary to see the Spirit of God work in all of our lives. This morning I'm going to give you an opportunity to share something that God is speaking to you that's meant for the rest of us. I don't mean just the thing that you've got to go, you know, get a new hairdo or something like that. I mean something that God's saying. You've been holding on to it, maybe. You've been sitting on it. Maybe it's just a, a thought of thanksgiving. Maybe, maybe it's a, an encouragement for someone. That we could be the body of Christ, that we could actually speak life into each other as we speak the word of the Lord. Some of you are afraid. You're afraid of receiving the Spirit of God. You're afraid of what the power of the Holy Spirit might do in your lives. You don't need to be afraid. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us an ability to understand the words of Scripture. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the ability to overcome sin. The Holy Spirit doesn't mean you go some kind of cartwheel someplace and do some kind of... He'll use your personality in whatever way you want to do, but you know what? It's important that when He speaks to you, that you listen. That's the only important thing. Yeah, like God's Word can guide us. I don't mind scrapping the message today, because the message is only my best interpretation of what I want to say today. But, but if God is saying something else that's more important for right now, Last week I shared about how I, I felt like there's this little sadness. There's something going on. You know, we can conjure something up. We can get smoke screens over here. We can do some other kind of thing. We can make church like a carnival. None of which really brings life, does it? It's an event you go to and you leave. And when you get home, guess what? You have to live with you. And so does everybody else. If God doesn't change us internally. He didn't change us at all. And that means our mind has to change. That means our spirit needs to be willing to cooperate with what God has to say. I'm more than confident that he has a message for us today through his people. We're going to take communion together in a few moments after. I want to give you an opportunity to share. Thought to um, word of encouragement uh, maybe uh, something that the Lord is teaching you for the rest of us so that we can hear from the people of God the word of God today in the spirit of God is that good? Amen I don't leave you at, do you have a bless the Lord oh my soul Bless the Lord, 
oh my soul and let all that is within me bless his holy name The reason I can say bless the Lord, oh my soul, is not because everything is good and perfect. Not because everything is going the way that I think it should go. Good morning, church. I just want to say on this Thanksgiving weekend that I have a lot to be thankful for. Um, you know, as I just sit in this row in church this morning, I look at how I have my co-workers to the left and the right of me. And that's an amazing thing. Um, I thank Barbara who brought me back to church um, because I had been away for a long time. Um, I was in a Pentecostal church for many, many years and after a divorce back 15 years ago, I just kind of got away from the Lord. And I'm thankful that I've been given another chance. I have a wonderful husband and a wonderful family. And I have a new church family, many of you who I don't know a whole lot, and that's partly because in some ways my family is a little unbalanced with me serving God and my husband who I pray for all the time. But we have a wonderful pastor and a pastor's wife. You know, I don't really ever get a chance to tell Pastor Ron and Sister Bernice how much I appreciate them, but I see how much love they have for this church and how anointed the Lord has been with our pastor. And to see you this morning just be used by God to say, Lord, what do you want me to say or what is it that you want for your people this morning? That to me is like I get goosebumps inside knowing that that's God speaking to all of us. But um, I just want to say thanks to Sandy and Barbara as well because I'm so blessed to know that when I go to work every day, we have a great team working together with one another and to know that you have godly people around you is huge because we work, we live in a world today that's so crazy and confusing. So to have all of that, I'm just thankful for so much. So I just want to say thanks and thanks to all of you.
I've asked Lila, Lila to read my testimony for me because it's too difficult to share. Psalm chapter 16 verse 8 says, I know the Lord is with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. In his, oh, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10 says, In his kindness God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered for a little while, he will restore support and strengthen you, and he will place you in, on a firm foundation. These scriptures have helped me through a difficult time in my life. I've learned them through joining Master Builders Church on my mission to learn about God and the Bible. My decision to let Jesus into my heart was on the worst night of my life. I was suffering from severe depression and wanted to end my life to stop the pain. My husband is an alcoholic and my life has become such a struggle I couldn't bear. We've been married 28 years and he is a good man with a disease I just can't fix. One night, after begging him not to go to the bar, I just snapped and the painful thoughts were unbearable. I got some pills and went to my bed to take them and I heard in my head, you are not alone. This is not your time. There is more to do with the life I have given you. Now, suffering from depression, there are not a lot of good thoughts going on in your head, but hearing this helped me and gave me strength. I called my sister to take me to the hospital. I was in treatment for depression in a program for a week, and I knew as soon as I finished the program, I was going to church to learn about God and get the healing that I need. Now my sister and her family have been Christians for a long time. I could have gone to church with her, but I felt God was leading me to this church, and I am just trying to follow him. I asked my niece Lila to attend Master Builders with me, and her parents agreed. Lila has helped me with this journey. I am so grateful for this. Thank you, Pastor Ron and Bernice, for welcoming me into your church family. Now as for my marriage, I have separated from my husband, but not legally, and he still provides for me. He is a good man with a bad disease. He was never abusive to me in any way. I was just left alone all this time. I still have hope for my marriage and hope that God will heal my husband. But living under those circumstances was not good for me, and even my husband understands this. Jesus died for our sins so we can be saved to eternal life and living my life now. I'm determined to continue to try to live with purpose, love, gratitude, worship, prayer, and obedience to God. This is not always easy, but God has a plan for all of us. So trusting this helps us through all life's challenges. I take one step at a time and pray a lot now, which I must admit was not a normal daily thing in my life prior to that night. I'm getting stronger every day and God is with me every step. Knowing that now, knowing that now is such a comfort and gives me peace. I have to say, remembering more to do, there's more to do with the life I've given you that night gives me such hope, faith, and purpose. It honestly hadn't hit me yet that God, that God gave me life. For me, it all became so clear that night. I always believed in God, but now I comprehend how awesome our God is and how important it is to have this relationship with God. I thank you, God. Amen. Uh, I want just to, I think the word was, was so powerful today. Um, and as God told uh, Ezekiel to prophesy over the dry bones, so we are the church of the Lord, and we will prophesy over the dry bones. I feel from the Lord that we have to just prophesy. Maybe we can't reach this man out, but his wife is here. We can prophesy over the dry bone and, and pray for the Lord to restore his life and restore the marriage. Amen. So let us just pray together because we, we have to be bold sometimes. Sometimes the Lord leads us to do what we have to do and we step back. But when we are bold as God called us to be, things can happen. And I don't know if you trust and if you believe, but if you believe, we can do it now. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that we serve the same Lord, the same God that Ezekiel heard that day. So we're going to do it now. Amen? Lord, I, I want to to take this step of faith and I want to prophesy over my sister's life 
And I want to prophesy over her husband's life. We can't see him. I don't know him. But you, O oh Lord, knows him. You know him from his birth. You know him even when he wasn't formed yet. O oh Lord, and I pray that you, you will touch his life today. You will bring healing to his life. His spiritual healing, physical healing, mental healing. Oh Lord, and everything that's going on in this family. Oh Lord, everything that the enemy tries to do with this family, oh Lord. You can turn things out. You can turn things upside down. You can, Lord, just turn things to to be in the right place now, Lord, and, and bring healing and life. Bring life to this family again. Lord, touch this man. Touch this woman, oh Lord. Touch this whole family. And Lord, we know that you are able to do. And we praise you because you are doing already. Lord, we prophesy over the dry bones now. And oh Lord, bring life again. Bring life again to this family in Jesus' name. The name is, that is above all name, we pray. Amen and amen.